musculoskeletal radiology. Raised intracranial pressure, ICP. Raised ICP occurs when there is an increase in pressure inside the skull. Increased pressure inside the skull leads to specific radiological changes which help in diagnosis. This can happen due to brain swelling, tumors, hydrocephalus, or bleeding within the brain. Radiological features. 1. Copper beaten sign. One of the most important signs seen in skull x-rays is the copper beaten sign. This appears as prominent convolutional markings on the inner surface of the skull. But why does this happen? When pressure inside the skull increases, the growing brain starts pressing against the inner table of the skull, causing these indentations. These indentations resemble the hammered surface of copper metal, hence the name copper beaten sign. 2. Sutural diastasis in children. In children, raised ICP can cause widening of skull sutures, a condition known as sutural diastasis. This happens because the sutures in children's skulls are not yet fused, so increased pressure pushes them apart. This is an important radiological clue in pediatric cases. 3. Erosion of dorsum cella in adults. In adults, raised ICP can cause erosion of the dorsum cella, which is part of the sphenoid bone that surrounds the pituitary gland. This erosion occurs due to persistent pressure on the cella tercica, an important structure at the base of the skull. Convolutional markings are seen throughout the skull vault, suggestive of a copper beaten skull appearance. Acromegaly Acromegaly is a condition that occurs when the body produces too much growth hormone, GH, after the bones have stopped growing. This is different from gigantism, which occurs before growth plate fusion and leads to excessive height. The most common cause is a pituitary adenoma, a benign tumor of the pituitary gland that secretes excess GH. Clinical Features Acromegaly primarily affects bones, soft tissues, and facial structures. Let's go over the key clinical features. 1. Overgrowth of distal phalanges, spade phalanx. One of the hallmark signs is the overgrowth of the distal phalanges of the fingers. This gives the fingers a broad, thickened appearance, often referred to as a spade phalanx because they resemble the shape of a spade. This can be detected both clinically and on x-ray. 2. Increased heel pad thickness. Acromegaly also leads to increased thickness of the heel pad, which can be measured radiologically. The normal heel pad thickness is less than 23 mm in females and less than 25 mm in males. In acromegaly, it exceeds these values, helping in diagnosis. 3. Prognathism, widened cella, and enlarged sinuses. Prognathism refers to the forward protrusion of the jaw, giving patients a characteristic facial appearance. The cella tercica, which houses the pituitary gland, becomes widened due to the enlarged tumor pressing on it. The paranasal sinuses also become enlarged, contributing to the coarse facial features seen in these patients. Radiological Features 1. Thickened Bones Patients with acromegaly have thickened bones, especially in the skull, hands, and feet. This results from excessive bone deposition over time due to prolonged exposure to growth hormone. 2. Prominent Paranasal Sinuses On X-ray or CT scans, the paranasal sinuses appear enlarged and more prominent. This is a direct result of bone overgrowth and expansion of air spaces in the skull. AP and lateral view of bilateral hand and foot show a typical spade-like appearance due to prominent sumbungal tufts. Shafts of metacarpal, tarsal, and phalanges appear widened. Metacarpal head appear enlarged and thickened along the margins simulating beak-like osteophytes. Paget's disease of bone. Chronic disorder that affects the normal bone remodeling process, leading to abnormal bone formation and structural changes. Clinical Features Paget's disease can affect any bone, but the most commonly involved areas include the skull, 
spine, pelvis, and long bones. Patients may experience visual or hearing loss due to cranial nerve compression when the skull is affected. Enlarged head size, a characteristic finding known as the Tam O'Shanter sign, named after a traditional Scottish cap that appears oversized, much like the growing skull in Paget's disease. Radiological features. 1. Skull findings. Cotton wool skull. This refers to multiple sclerotic spots seen in the skull, giving it a patchy, cotton wool-like appearance on x-rays. Osteoporosis circumscripta. This appears as large lytic areas in the skull, representing early destructive changes. Lateral skull of an older adult woman with Paget disease. Note the thickened table of the skull, the areas of lytic mixed with sclerotic bone, and the appearance of cotton wool spots or circular densities of sclerotic bone, so characteristic of Paget disease. 2. Long bone findings. Blade of grass sign or candle flame sign. These terms describe the advancing edge of lysis, seen in long bones, where the lesion has a flame-shaped or tapering appearance. This is an early hallmark of Paget's disease in the long bones. Paget disease of the left hemipelvis and left proximal femur, sparing the right, with coarse remodeling of bone, enlargement, and deformity of the pelvis. There is thickening of the iliopectineal line, so characteristic of Paget's disease of bone with accentuated trabeculae and thickened cortices. Protrusion and loss of joint space are present on the left. 3. Spine Findings Picture frame vertebra. This occurs due to peripheral sclerosis with central osteopenia, creating an outline that resembles a picture frame. Ivory vertebra. This refers to diffuse sclerosis of the vertebral body, making it appear densely white on x-rays. Severe spinal stenosis in Paget disease. Paget disease affecting L4 and L5 with overgrowth of L4, extension of pagetic changes into the posterior elements of the spine and compression. This man presented with severe spinal stenosis. Paget disease of talus and calcaneus. This lateral plane radiograph shows an ankle with signs of Paget disease. Both the talus and calcaneus show increased density, sclerotic bone, and thickened trabeculae. Each has expanded in overall size. The talocrural, ankle, and subtalar joints appear relatively normal. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.